Hi, I'm Andrew Busman. I'm the director of Fausto. I was born in Toronto, Canada. I um, was sort of getting interested in film um, as an undergraduate student. I had a lot of friends in film. I studied social anthropology for my undergraduate, and then I went and did an MA in social anthropology, in which I studied sort of experimental ethnographic cinema, and then decided to go back and do an MFA. Um, my previous film, Stefausto, is I have a film uh, I co-directed called Tales of Two Who Dreamt that was shot in Toronto. Um, and then before that, a medium-length film called He Whose Face Gives No Light, and then a series of short films. So, yeah, I mean, questions of heritage are a little are complicated. My father is German, my last name is German, my father's a German migrant to Canada. Um, who actually migrated because of a, a film. He saw the film of Saskatchewan, he was very young and thought Canada would provide better economic opportunities than in Germany at the period of time he was living. He sort of left in the late 60s. Um, but my mother's not German, she's a Maltese um, migrant to Canada. Um, and so I have a mixed cultural background. So I don't think German is sort of what draws me to Goethe in any way? I mean, as you know, the question you posed, it's that I, I, you know, I'm from Toronto, but I live in Mexico. My husband's Mexican. Um, right now I'm living in Mexico, but I also um, live a great deal in the United States. So previous to Mexico, I was living in New York City, and I will go back to New York City this summer, and then after that, perhaps somewhere else. So. Um, Questions of heritage are, are very complicated. Um, I think when you're a child of migrants from two different places and then born, you know, in, in a country neither are from. In terms of Goethe's work, I mean, Goethe interests me as, as a thinker in his own right, and I'm interested in sort of many ideas he has from uh, many of his works, whether that's sort of, you know, his theories on color to uh, questions or issues of metamorphosis in nature. I think um, in terms of in terms of my cinematic practice, I'm interested a lot in other artistic forms and sort of sort of formal qualities um, that they possess, and, and that's you know holds as well for literature. This film obviously is based on um, you know a, a German myth, legend, Faust, um, and my previous work, um, Tales of Who Dreamt, was based on the work of Kafka's Metamorphosis. So there's definitely a, a literary influence um, in my work, but sort of less so story elements. I mean, I think what interests me more are formal elements when I think of writers that influence me a great deal from Borges, you know, and his sort of work on translation and how he thought of translation in his work, um, which shows up again a great deal in my previous film, Tales. Um, or when I think of this film, of Faust, it has sort of, you know, it helps sort of narrative elements of Faust, but what really interests me um, is sort of formal issues. Um, one of the writers, so there's a Mexican writer, Maria Beatin, who influenced this Faust work a great deal, and I really like Maria's writing for his sort of experimentation um, and his ability to uh, sort of lay things bare in a way, so sort of show um, the underpinnings of his uh, literary experimentation. So, you know, the work goes from being very evocative at times, but it's sort of also very Brechtian um, in, in the sort of distances it creates and reflection, spaces for reflection. Um, when I think about cinema, I often think about form elements, again, of other artworks. And so I might think, for example, literature is like, how does duration work in this piece? And then can I think about um, how to translate that into cinema or, you know, how sort of something works structurally in music and then how can I take that structure and, and put it into a cinematic form so sort of to, again, to experiment with cinema but by being influenced by many other sort of formal artistic uh, practices. So how this project came about and how I ended up you know, working with the Faust legend itself, and I would say not just sort of Goethe's work, but you know, many different adaptations of Faust. Um, I was teaching at the time at SFU, and I was given a gift 
of a camera that uh, has a really high ISO, the Sony A7S, and this camera can see in really low lighting conditions. And I started to become really interested in sort of questions of technology, uh, questions of perception. And at the time, I was teaching a class on Gertrude Stein, um, well, a class on already moving images, but covered uh, a section of that class on theater and the moving images and looked at Gertrude Stein, Dr. Fester's Lights the Lights, actually via the Worcester Group in New York. And, uh, you know, Dr. Faustus lights the lights. Um, in Gertrude Stein's work, Faust sells his soul for electric light. And so it's a work very much um, of that time that's sort of critiquing new ways of seeing and new ways of moving in the early 20th century, um, as well as sort of shifting identities, et cetera. So I sort of planted this seed when I got this camera of um, trying to make a Faust film, you know, that looks at technology, sort of evolving cinematic technologies, um, but also perception, and for me, um, the relationship to nature. So I, I went back to the work of, of Goethe and actually ended up reading that version many times, and you know picked up particular themes that I thought were relevant to themes um, of the location I was shooting, but also sort of just sort of present day um, ideas and that I wanted to touch upon, whether that was sort of, you know, post-colonial issues on to, you know, the devil's contracts, again, to issue of perception and issues of our relationship to nature and history in general. Um, and so I ended up, again, reading over and over Goethe's text, but also Gertrude Stein's text, Marlowe's text of Faust, others' versions of Faust. I mean, um, yeah, uh, it ended up being just very much, uh, you know, the documents of Faust. So it, it ended up being a lot of research, actually, um, into the Faust text. And then from that research, taking these, again, very particular threads that would allow me to sort of tile these nexus points together that I had. I mean, the movie is called Faust for a reason. And when, if you call a movie Dracula after a particular character, or if, you know, Little Red Riding Hood after a fairy tale, for example, there's an obvious understanding that people are going to come with some, you know, pre-knowledge to that screening in the, in the case of cinema. And in terms of this work, for me, it's very obviously heavily bounded in, you know, uh, themes of Faust. But if you're not well versed in Faust, it might not be as obvious as other adaptations of Faust, which, which take very direct threads, let's say, of the story, or perhaps the love story, let's say, in the first part of Goethe's Faust. Um, this movie does have the thread of the second part of Goethe's Faust. So, you know, the last act before Faust actually dies when he's on the beach um, and he's giving sort of a strip of the land, of the coastland, by the emperor. So. If, you've, if you know Faust well by Goethe, you'll be able to recognize at least that thread. But I think the majority of the adaptation is, ends up being very thematic. So issues of sort of colonial, uh, capital, the devil, issues of metamorphosis, issues of perception, again, issues of nature and history. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, obviously Gertrude Stein was an influence, um, Marlowe was an influence. I mean, Marlowe was less sort of, um, it was more, the, you know, sort of base story. Um, a lot of Faust adaptations, you know, Marlowe kind of covers um, sort of the most common threads or, you know, of, of narrative threads used in most Faust tales. Um, there's definitely Mahler there, and that's sort of Mahler's ode to the, the Faust, um, Goethe's Faust. So it's, I took that section um, of his symphony as a way to, I mean, I like these, I like putting these small homages in, into the film of other Faust adaptations. There's several others, again, let's see if it would be kind of fun if, for Faust scholars if they can recognize the other kind of references. Um, the final scene of the movie, the final voiceover scene of the movie is um, a play on Gertrude Stein's Faust, Dr. Faust's Lights the Lights of the piece of the text that's just slightly changed. Um, so again, yeah, it was 
it was many adaptations. It was definitely not the, just an original text. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in Faust, you know, sort of both as a legend, you know, as a story that's told and retold over generations, but also as, you know, a myth, as, as a piece that asks us many issues of being and sort of cosmological questions that are much greater um, than just the retellings. And I think Faust is important, or even my film, not sort of as a singularity, um, in terms of a singular adaptation of Faust, but in, in, in a body of all of these kind of adaptations, you know, because through them we can see the sort of history of its representations, and then we see sort of how, you know, the past and contemporary times, I mean, can be, can become powerful ways, you know, these kind of adaptations and looking at these uh, histories of the representations can be powerful ways to engage with contemporary times through the past.